Peace, everybody. Um, in one account, the angel of the Lord descended. There was a great earthquake, and the stone was rolled away, this great stone that was covering the tomb of Christ. And when the women uh, arrived there, that was one account. The other accounts were uh, inside the sepulcher. There was a young lad there, and that was not the same as the angel. It was a different, uh, different words, I think, were used. Um, in yet another account, there was uh, two in shining garments that were saying, Why seek ye, or at least one was saying, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. So you have these different accounts, and one of the possible explanations I was uh, attempting to give was that when when Christ was resurrected uh, so too were others and that is the power of the cross and that is the power of his resurrection um, which is really interesting because we we have an account um, where is it okay Matthew 22 where it talks about um, at the resurrection what people you know become uh, or as like. In Matthew twenty two, twenty three, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third, unto the seventh. And the last of all the women died also. Therefore in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken of to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now where I wanted to focus here was for in the resurrection they neither marry nor in, are given in marriage, but they are as the angels, the messengers of God in heaven. Interesting, because at the resurrection, you see what appears to be more than uh, the angel of the Lord descending and sitting on the, the great stone and that great earthquake that happened then. Mega earthquake, mega earthquake. Uh, that account is one. But then there is this, like, the young person inside the sepulcher also in, in white raiment. And then the two uh, standing saying, why do you seek the living among the dead? It is very possible that at the time of Christ's resurrection, the other, other bodies were resurrected. It's only possible, that's what the Bible says. And uh, they were seen by many. So this account of different accounts in, in the Gospels, a good explanation that possibly is that they were encountering uh, what... Uh, it's sort of like a dividing line. Once they were resurrected, they became as the angels, uh, as messengers of God. And it, they're depicted by the, the white raiment. And that's, that's one of the things that the, the radiant glow of the white raiment was seen at the uh, transfiguration with Moses and Elijah. And 
you get the impression that that's what's to come for all believers. Um, and even in Revelation, it, it speaks of that. So that's that's really exciting, actually. I mean, you know, who knows what that's going to be like, but we're months away from that. So, <laughs> so it's like there's a lot of shining going on in these Gospels um, with the different accounts. And uh, we reviewed also how... Uh, Christ had appeared, appeared to them uh, inquiring and they not knowing who he was and he was inquiring, you know, what things? What are you talking about? What's, what's been going on? Uh, and they Cleopas went and he answered. And uh, that's one of the reasons I looked that up because I, I said, wait a second, because in, in the gospel it says two men uh, stood in shining garments and then Cleopas had reiterated that it was two messengers, two angels. And so it, it's very, very possible that that's an explanation for that, that many came out of the, the tombs at that time and uh, became as uh, messengers of God or angels of God. Um, and I hope, you know, you guys all have a happy Easter because <laughs> this, like, I released a CD and the CD was Merry Last Christmas. That was at Christmas time. I uh, passed a lot of those out for free. Uh, this is very similar. This is, you know, happy last Easter because we are celebrating the resurrection in the year that there is going to be the resurrection of the living and the dead. That's exciting. I mean, that's just, that's sobering, but man, it's exciting because we're months away from that. I wanted to um, go over some of these uh, numbers. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this, because it's in the book, my book, Countdown to the Last Day, uh, actually, the very first chapters in this book uh, go over numbers, and 17 uh, is one of them. And I thought I'd put that in the front of the book just to help people out um, get familiar with numbers before they dive into the book and, and start hearing me speak about all the numbers, and then they can refer it really quick. Oh, what was 17 again? What was 23 again? 23 is judgment. 17 is the times when salvation is possible. Um, I wanted to look at this though. Um, in Numbers 28:16, and in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. Now Christ was the Passover lamb. He fulfilled all these things so precisely to the day uh, in fulfillment of the Old Testament scriptures. And you know, we spoke about this on the last uh, video that he opened their eyes to the scriptures. He he, he showed them the book of Moses. He showed them all the prophets. He showed them the Psalms. And he showed them how he, he is the fulfillment of all these things. And he was also the fulfillment uh, uh, as the Passover lamb. Um, behold the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. The sins of the world. So you have this, these Old Testament ceremonies being fulfilled in Christ. Uh, from you know, like 7 BC, his birth onward to 33 AD when he hung on the cross. Um, Nisan 14 uh, is the 14th day of the first month. Uh, that was in AD 33, and it's uh, say April 1st. This was the Passover, the time Christ hung on the cross as a Passover lamb, and his resurrection is spoken of in the Bible as the first of the first fruits. Well, there again, you're having a, a, a ceremonial uh, law that was established way back when, and Christ is a fulfillment of that. Now, that would have been April 3rd at his resurrection, where he became the first of the first fruits, as the high priest uh, would have offered the first fruits. He was the high priest. He was the Lamb of God. He was the fulfillment of all things. Um, then you have when Christ said, you will be endued from power on high, wait, wait until that, that Feast of Weeks. And there again, you have the Pentecost, it's called the Feast of Weeks, another literal fulfillment to the day. And you have this illustration of it being like a mini Jubilee when they waited 49 days and on the 50th day, uh, it was Pentecost when God saved a lot of people by His Spirit. Um, so that brings us to 
um, from say uh, April 1st, which was Nissan 14 and 33 AD, that brings us to May 22nd, 33 AD. That's when that's when Pentecost happened. So I w I'm bringing this all up because I think it's very, very, very important at this point when everybody's de declaring May 21. 2011 as the time of the rapture what are the patterns what are the illustrations we have um, now April um, 18th April 18th at sundown was was the Passover as far as our calendar goes and from April 18th 2011 to and including Friday, October 21, which I believe is the time of the, the last day and the timing of the rapture and all that, it's, it's going to be accumulated onto that great day, what the Bible calls the Feast of Tabernacles, when Christ stood up and he, he proclaimed that great cry of salvation. So I believe salvation goes to the last day, October 21. But from, the, from uh, April 18th, which equates Nisan 14, when the Passover happens, uh, which we've already passed, but to Friday, October 21, there's 187 days from the start date to the end date, or six months and four days. Now, 187 days translates into 11 times 17. So you have this period of 187 days ending on the great day, the great day of the feast, that last day, Feast of Tabernacles, which will also have a literal fulfillment. And 11 is important because it, it refers to Christ's coming. Spoke about that in the book. And 17 is important because that is the number that represents periods of time where salvation is possible. So even into that, you know, that last great day, salvation is possible, but we're right at Christ's coming. That is how these numbers work out. Now you also see 17 in the 153 days from May 21, which I believe is going to be like a reliving of Pentecost for that period of time where God saves each day so many people uh, all over the world. It's going to be a great time. It's a time of catching a great fish like the disciples caught 153 great fish. Um, that also show 17 the number 153 and the way it is is that 153 breaks down to 3 times 3 times 17 um, from Passover April 18th which we've already passed a couple days past right now to and including May 21 it's 2 times 17 the amount of days now Yeah, that would be 34. So 34 days, 2 times 17. Um, you all have, you, what I'm trying to explain here is we all have these little short periods of time within the year 2011. And a lot of these are showing 17, but the, the start of these little periods of time are important because they're important feast celebrations. So why does 17 keep showing up? What is this all about? 